We are. <laughs> believe it or not, we are live. Not live. Oh, God. Obviously, I don't want to ruin the magic for everyone at home. This is pre-recorded. We don't actually oh, yeah. manage to get everything timed for a Tuesday at 10 o'clock um, <laughs> or, or Thursday, kind of as and when we remember to do these. Yeah. But yes, we are live. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, not bad. Not bad. Ticking along. Um, Good. Work's still, work still pretty quiet at my end. Um, it's still really quiet, but it's there's a few things in the pipeline. So it's mm-hmm. been a funny start to the year this year for me. It's been... I quickly been to jump in. Like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's just for you. I hear, I'm hearing no. a lot from people that it's just across the board is just being weird. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've never had it like this uh, apart from during COVID. This, I've never had it this quiet. So that's really? quite concerning. Unless COVID's actually happening outside and it's a massive conspiracy that I'm in a Truman show. <laughs> what? No, no, we've just, we've just not heard about this. It's yeah. just, just, just passing us by. Everything, we're, we're getting all the consequences, but not being involved in any of the drama. Yeah. I mean, basically, if I spent too long on the internet, that would, that would be my conclusion. I do my own research, man. <laughs> I'd be careful. I don't want to be that guy, but I'd be very careful about reading everything you see on the internet, Greg. We've talked about <laughs> this. We've talked about this. <laughs> yeah, but oh, honestly, real, real talk, I, I don't think you're the only one. I'm hearing it yeah. from a lot of people that it's just been a really weird year. Some people are saying that it's maybe feeling like it's starting to get a bit, bit busier, but... Yeah, Honestly. well, the new financial year, you'd hope that that would kind of lead to a bit of a change, but we'll see. Oh, yeah. Happy new financial year. Let's let's not make this a tax podcast. <laughs> Going to stop Hello. you there. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Exposed Negative Finance Chat. <laughs> I don't know why, that. but why do I think <laughs> that people in finance do that kind of voice? I know a lot of people in finance and they all talk brilliantly. None of them are nasal whatsoever. So apologies to all my friends in the finance world. That's just um, your inner nerd battling to come out. It is. And I can let me out. See, it's. I'll just. I'll stuff it away, like I always have to do. <laughs> um, how about yourself? Uh, I uh, have been good, actually, really good. Um, everything's everything's fine, actually, considering I've got a newborn in the house and and a four and a half year old. Um, actually, I'm I'm doing okay for levels of energy and creativity. I'm keeping myself busy if uh, with lots of, you know what I'm like I have fingers in a lot of pies and the um the bakery keep kicking me out um so no, I guess the problem is I I travel a lot doing all sorts of weird stuff so last week or the week before I was in Athens for a few days with the capture one guys so mm-hmm. I went out to go and meet the engineering team and uh, basically sat down and discussed for two days straight a whole ton of stuff, a whole ton of uh, improvements and basically how professionals use the software. So it was a really interesting time. So I've, I've been busy doing a load of that sort of stuff, the tech stuff, the mainframe stuff that I do, um, as well as a few shoots here and there as well. So it's been, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a lot. Um, and then obviously we're still doing this, uh, which is nice. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know when this is going to come out. I think probably after the fact, but I'm, I'm speaking at Photo North next week, but by the time this mm. comes out, it might be last week. And at which point, I had a great time last week speaking at Photo North. The people there were amazing. So it was awesome. terrible like, that that moment when the guy threw the water balloon at you. So uh, awkward. So awkward. Yeah. But luckily, it was full of glitter. You shouldn't have worn beige pants. <laughs> <laughs> How can you see? Are you what? <laughs> That is so awkward. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So basically, it's it's been all right. But I've had I've had a kind of a couple of obviously. And if anyone's listened to this podcast in the past, I, I kind of tend to come on every week and be like, I've had a revelation. But sadly, I've had a couple of revelations this week. Number one, I've had sadly, without meaning to have to do it, I still I'm going to own it. And, and fly with it and use it whenever I can. But I've had to buy a new backpack. Okay. Because you see these shoulders mm. with, the, with the weight of the world on them, um, they got sore, believe it right. or not. I, I, I had a really long shoot 
the other week uh, where I was having to like just literally chuck the bag on my back, grab a stand bag, and then jump on the tube, go you know twenty minutes, and then jump off again, and then do five five or six of them in a day. And both shoulders at the end of the day, the day after, mm. had strap bruises because obviously I've overloaded my mm. big design bag. Because you own that yeah. bag as well, right? It's an like I would say my favorite ever camera bag, but it's but so the straps. Well, the straps are fine, but as soon as you then fill the bag, the straps mm. are are a bit hurty. Not so fine. No, so yeah. I've had to get a Shimoda bag because they have got the thickest straps of any camera bag that I could find. And they're yep. designed for hiking. You you own one, right? Got one of them too. Yeah. There we go. So, <laughs> but I but I decided that actually maybe a hiking bag would be just more sensible, just to give my back as much comfort as possible. Because I was like, oh, mm, do I get a backpack? Do I try and get a roller? Well, actually, fifty percent of my shoots, a roller would be really impractical. Fifty percent would be useful. Um, but I decided against it, so I've ended up going with the Shimoda Action V two X forty S R. T. Cool name. It's cool, isn't it? I, th- I think I actually just called the Action 40 V2. Yeah. Is that right? X40? X40, something like that. Yeah. They're, they're great bags. They're really well made. Um, they are, you know, um, they're designed for kind of outdoors backcountry skiing, really. Um, so, which, which yeah, is you know. exactly, what I ne- <laughs> exactly what I need it for, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, it's... It, <laughs> It is one of those things, bags, where I mean, we've 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 chatted about it plenty of times before. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I'm a big sucker for a for a, a well designed camera bag, but I've never found the perfect system. Um, and I've been watching with interest because uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the brand. There's a uh, I want to say it's a new Wandered case maybe they've done like a rolling case and a back and a travel bag a bit like the peak design very similar to the peak design um not that i'm suggesting anything um and but they're quite good in terms of they're both quite interchangeable so so they're very uh, similar layouts inside so you could literally take your icu your internal camera unit type thing Mm -hmm. and take it out of one and put it in the other um because quite often if i'm traveling through airports i don't want to be schlepping with the bag on my shoulder through the airport yeah but when i get to the other end it might be that actually having a backpack is more practical so in an ideal world you'd have like uh, you know you'd you'd take a small hold bag which was a rolling bag which you could use or sorry you take your backpack as your hold bag and your rolling bag as your camera bag and then swap it when you get to the other side mm-hmm. um, no that that's a that's a dream scenario isn't it well what, one of the things i decided to do is yes i'll be having that shimoda bag on my back but the peak design cube will just be in it i'm gonna and so yeah. i'm gonna now start moving and actually use it for what it was designed to do which is exactly kind of your what you've just described yeah yeah no it's um I don't know. There's, it's one of those things that they're, they're just. Uh, it's really important to have look after your back and to have kind of because um, you know if you get tired and you get kind of pain and achy and stuff, it really starts to affect the way that you can shoot, the way your mental state is, and everything. So it's, mm-hmm. yeah, well, also it's important, man. Without being funny, like I love my job. Don't get me wrong, but like I want, I don't want to be that dad to be like can't pick his kids up, or like I want to make sure that I can like you know clang beers together in the pub or whatever without going like that you know as, whilst holding it. your kid of course i'm clanging beers <laughs> with the kid <laughs> you're clanging your beer into a kid <laughs> no not, kid after, into... not after the pub <laughs> told me not to tell me to stop doing that oh, yeah <laughs> got confused no. and picked cheers your children <laughs> but my, yeah my, my little boy loves doing cheers does he it's his favorite thing yeah do you know what do you know why we cheers not with beers um no so uh, what okay this i'm sure someone will write in and be like you've got the age you've got the 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 the, 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 period, term, wrong. the period of history wrong i got told that in medieval times the reason we cheers was to and that's mm. why you make eye contact because it's very difficult to murder someone when you're making eye contact so what you would do is you cheers your glasses i, I wouldn't know which would well, it would mi- <laughs> no it's obviously same same here but it would mix that when you cheers the drinks it would mix the liquid 
from oh, both, yes. both cups to then prove the that, exactly that there's no poisons in there. And do you know why we have spiral staircases? But yeah, because of the sword arm and the shield arm and fighting That's upstairs. That's right. You can defend coming down, but you can't attack going up, only if you're right-handed. As soon as left-handed people started attacking, the whole world fell apart. But, uh, <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> a little bit of history knowledge for you there? Uh, yeah, an attack a castle with an entirely left-handed army. You'd I mean... Be, you'd be amazing. <laughs> the war would be over like that. Job done. Yeah. So, we've got some serious stuff to discuss, though. Serious, yeah. Serious voices. Serious voices. I've just whacked the mic, which has taken <laughs> has taken a slight element of seriousness out of it because I'm showing how unprofessional I am. Um, let's talk about monitors. Ugh, half no, the I'm, audience turn off. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> right, okay. Here's a here's a question. Right for everyone at home, because obviously riveting stuff. As we've as we as we've discussed, we do these live, so you now know that I'm listening to you in real time, all the listeners at home, but how many of you have got a monitor that's calibrated and that calibration is up to date and that calibration is verified? And that you care enough. <laughs> and, yes, but I think we should all care enough. This is the, this is the problem. So let me, let me explain my, my predicament. I used, yeah. to have an, I used to have an ISO. Yeah, and and it was one of the self calibrating ones, and then mm -hmm. because of my, I'm going to say impulsive purchase disorder, uh, okay. I decided that that wasn't a good enough monitor for me, despite it being industry standard and good enough for almost everybody in our world. Um, I decided that I wanted to buy an Apple XDR display because I was I was not getting true blacks and true whites in my ISO display. Mm. Mm -hmm. A bizarre choice. A, I think, a fair to say, irrational, weird decision, but this was that was my logic at the time. I can only apologize to myself for that rather expensive purchase. Bought the XDR, thrilled with it. it really cool. Uh, the most beautiful display I've ever looked at. And yes, if you're going, but did he buy the stand? Yes, I, I didn't waste the money on the stand. I bought the stand, and every day I adjust it to enjoy that stand. Because if you've if you've bought one or you've gone to the Apple store and you've moved the monitor and it has stayed exactly where you've put it, you go, hmm, it's not worth a thousand pounds, but you know, a uh, hundred quid. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm now trying to get as much value out of that monitor stand as I can. But the the the, the problem was. I was looking at the monitor and I had a message back from a picture editor the other day saying, oh, we've lost a bit of uh, detail in that part of the shadow area. And so I rung them and I was like, I've got tons of it. I, I, got, I can see everything in there. I got so much detail in that area. It's mm. not, it's, honestly, it's not an issue. And then it dawned on me that I have got, you know, one of the finest monitors you can buy, which has so much dynamic range that barely anyone else is able to see all that detail. So I'm there going, yeah, this edit is looking amazing, fantastic. Look at all that detail in the shadow area. And then they're going, yeah, it just looks crushed, mate. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Oh. Well, this is what this is what I meant. Well, I wasn't being facetious when I said, don't, you know, do you care? This is the issue with it is that you can spend a lot of time worrying about these things. And then for a lot of people, their work will just be looked at on a phone or a tablet. Mm hmm in a in a totally uncontrolled environment so in a way there's an argument to be said for like editing on a standard device screen that everyone at least checking on all of your devices you know yep. i will quite often drag stuff across back to my macbook from you know using my monitor to then double check it to say well actually how's it looking on that um so it is tricky, but you, so um, the, the reason that we kind of started this conversation is, is I'd had an issue with my um, uh, calibrator, which is the i1 display. Ta -da. Now, is that, the pro, um, is that the pro or the i1 display regular? Because I thought I had the pro, it turns out I just had the regular. I think this is the regular because it doesn't say pro on it. Well, that there would be go. my deduction. That is that is well, that is exactly the same conclusion that I drew. <laughs> <laughs> and I, th I can't remember how much that was, but I'm sure you're going to tell me how much the one that you've just bought was. I've just had to buy a new one because all of my monitors now are mini LED, 
and the one that you ha- one the one that you have the i1 doesn't do a mini led because it was created too long ago and the tech didn't exist to calibrate them but now it does so i bought this the display plus hl now will that work on older displays as well yes turns out it Good. will so if Good. you if you yeah so by the way i should i should say at no point i've bought this on amazon with my own with my own hard earned nothing has been sent but i just thought it'd be an interesting chat to have it i put it on and i've calibrated the monitor now what i will say is the photography p p65 uh, p3 d65 is not far off it's actually okay. it's, it's actually workable for most people but because a lot of my images have a lot of darker areas in I realized that the P3 and the, the the gamut that I was seeing on that monitor was too large. And so I needed to reduce the gamut by calibrating it to an industry standard. So it's now calibrated to Adobe RGB 1998. And so it has meant that I've reduced the gamut and I've lost detail. So I'm now seeing what everyone well, else is seeing. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It, it feels a bit stupid to have bought this monitor that's capable of so much to then hobble it slightly. Mm. Um, but now I'm kind of really confident in seeing what I'm, you know, sh- showing what I'm doing because yep. now it all feels correct. But I've also managed to, cause I've got a little monitor here, which we use for the podcast. I've managed to calibrate that. <laughs> and actually I didn't think I was possible to calibrate it, but it now looks all right. So, um, yeah, I can now actually see on this monitor. I've never been able to see on it before because it was shocking. And the levels, it would just randomly, every now and then, the red channel would just become like 100 and everything else would drop down. So I'd see everything in like a red wash. Um, oh, wow. It's a, it's a cheap like Amazon 12-inch little monitor. Actually, it's, it's kind of excellent uh, for, what it, for what it needs. I've got it mounted to the wall on a little arm that goes up and down. Uh, and then the and camera's on a tripod head that's screwed to the top of it. So your calibrating tool... Is that a USB or USB C connection? Or it is the new one is a USB C, just there, okay. and it does come with a little USB A thing in the in the box. But actually, yeah. this is this is sounding more and more like an ad for it. Hi, I'm using the new X right. <laughs> you know, I'm not how, sp- how much was it? How much was mm. it? it? It. This is this is the frustration, isn't it? Because look at it this way: I almost <laughs> bought a new ISO to use as a reference. But doing it this way means that, that would I have been very extra, very extra. But you know me, <laughs> I am I am wildly extra when it comes to tech. So, uh, but that I think was two hundred and twenty nine pounds. I think, yeah. Uh, which which is fine. Um, you know, it's not. It's it's quite a lot of money. Mm. But the you know the new version of it, for example it can email you when you need to recalibrate your screen, which I thought was quite a nice touch. And then you can also do, <clears throat> you can do validation checks. So if you do a calibration, you can then run the validator on it to then take the thing off, put it back on and then make sure it's like a good thing. And it'll give you a pass and fail. Um, this is what the old ones did that as well though. Did they? Yeah. You can oh, run validation. Shows, on. shows how little I, shows how little I used it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I mine, I I do need to do mine at some point. The monitor has gone, definitely, um, definitely needs a re re uh, calibration. And mm. I I can't remember. I think last time I ran it, my little one, this one was not working. We had a discussion. I downloaded some new software for it, but it is one of those things that's just. Ugh, it, so do you dull. know what? Bluntly, it's like hard drives, isn't it? It's kind of it's it feels like it's an essential, but really kind of. Um, unexciting thing to have yeah. to buy because not they why just... i got into photography but no. that way <laughs> yeah so i so, so i often get asked in interviews what drove you what got you into photography and i'm like hello it's just because i always want to calibrate my screen and store images just... on really nice hard drives you i know. just love color spaces yeah right icc profiles oh. um yeah it's it's dull i'm not gonna lie it might possibly be one of the most boring things but i also think it's a, a, a thing that kind of throws people a lot and mm. the thing is actually if you're on the p3d65 on a macbook pro it or, or like on an xdr honestly it's probably really close and the and the mm. factory uh your benq you use a benq yes or 
If you were talking to me five years ago, I went, a bank? <laughs> a bank I, I genuinely thought they were called bank monitors. Um, so that was, a, that was a good highlight of my tech career. Um, but the, um, all the factory uh, calibrations actually seem pretty good now. Hmm. So I've, I've obviously recently, well, not obviously, but I've recently launched a, um, a print shop. Ooh, and so yeah, I've, I've been, going, been going through a lot of this kind of calibration stuff. But, you know, generally, it was amazing, actually, before I um, kind of set it all up, I ordered the same six, uh, two images, I ordered in about six or seven varieties of paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, stock just to see how they all printed and then of course you know that's just an added thing you can have the same file exactly the same file that just comes out so differently depending on the paper that you're using yeah um and yeah i mean it's been it's been an interesting journey kind of going through that and uh working out what's going to look the best but also feel the most premium well can i can i just say uh, i feel that everybody should go and look at your print store because the way you've done it is really nice it, it's one of the nicest implementations of a print store i've seen yeah. from a photographer how you'd market- love to take credit for that but that's not down to me is that <laughs> is that a, is that a tom hole special it's a tom hole special there we go tom hole bless your soul the um he's not dead i don't know why i said that like bless him not bless his soul <laughs> anyway might, de- might delete that um so <laughs> might leave it in though he'll enjoy that um the but the, how you've how you've put the little video up on Instagram and stuff it just looks super slick and your work sings and it looks really good. Plus, also, if you're listening to this and haven't seen Greg's travel work and stuff like that, go and buy a print. It looks wicked. Like, what are well, you waiting interest- for? <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a hard. I think it's a hard market for a lot of photographers to kind of sell prints. If I'm honest, I think you know you're never going to make a lot of money from it um realistically especially with the cost of printing mm-hmm. and everything else that goes into it and then your overheads for running a shop all of that it's but it is useful to have somewhere where people can go if they want to be able to purchase prints and i have had kind of people saying that they want to get a certain print in the past so it's nice now to have somewhere to send people um, how is is that fulfilled via the print space yeah so it's all right. fulfilled self-fulfilled so once the order comes in it goes straight to them gets printed and delivered um it's a signed print with a certificate of authenticity and you know it's all automated so one after the initial setup there's no you know further work for me which is you know makes it worthwhile yeah nice and how how many images do you have in the print store Mm. uh i don't know off the top of my head actually it's about 10 12 something up on the website at the moment but i will keep adding to it um, I'm going to grow it slowly and probably add like a new print a month mm-hmm. every month or so. We'll see. Um, and, you know, if people kind of get in touch and say, actually, I've always really liked this image, because I also did that before I launched it. I kind of did a bit of a poll on my Instagram to be to basically say, you know, what what images do people like just to try and gauge it. It's mm-hmm. really hard to understand like what somebody might want on their walls. I mean, I don't have, um, I think maybe... On there, I've got one on the wall behind me. I've got like one of my own prints, but I really don't, aside from that, I really don't have any of my own work up because I live, you know, I'm too used to it. I'd much rather have the work of other photographers, but so it's really hard for me to gauge what somebody might want on their wall. Yeah. Because what means something to me is going to mean something totally different to somebody else. Well, I don't, I, I was thinking, I also don't have any of my work up anywhere whatsoever. I've got the, have I told you what I've got above my desk? Is it the TJ Teenage Ninja Turtles? Yeah, so I don't know if I've talked about that before. I had, I maybe have had a few bevies and then went on Japanese eBay or eBay Japan, as it's properly known, and um, and then ended up Japanese, finding... Japanese eBay sounds so much better, like Jap- <laughs> somewhere on the dark web. Japanese eBay was awesome. So, <clears throat> but I, I basically realised that there was quite a large charge on my card for eBay a couple of days later. I was suddenly going, what? what have I done? And I had found a closing down movie theater that had pristine prints from the eighties. So I've got the gremlins poster, the teenage mutant Ninja turtles and the ghostbusters two poster, but the original Japanese B2 film posters. And then it cost a quite a lot to get them securely, like safely transported from Japan mm. to here. But they're, they're like one of my favorite things that I've ever had. 
But then I've got at least that's, skateboards you know, and stuff around the office and all sorts. They look nice. You know, like I I had uh, I had a friend once who who had a few too many in the pub and decided to buy me some really bad taxidermy, and I had a kind of distressed looking squirrel turn up a week later. That lived for about, about that, a year in the house, but it just terrified everyone it, who saw it. It lived for a year in the house? Dude, that's not taxidermy. <laughs> that's a weird squirrel. <laughs> just pin, pinned on a plinth, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was pretty weird. That is weird. I actually, I actually once had a taxidermy um, rabbit skull and a crossbones that was gifted to me, uh, weirdly. It was a very odd thing to be gifted. But at the time, I think I was like trying to be vegan. I don't know if the person was just trying to wind me up. I think that was probably it. Yeah, very, I, very odd. I, you say that I've actually got a very small um, deer antler set up above my head that was gifted to me or on the shield. Is it a roebuck? What? Um, I think it was a monk jack. I have a friend who stalks deer. So oh right, okay. For a minute there, I yeah, thought it was yeah. like a, a monk called Jack. I was like, <laughs> again, that's not deer antlers, my friend. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's funny, isn't it? Because I mean, how do how do I? I'd love to know. I'd I, this is one of those moments where I just love to just be in a room of everyone listening to this and just be like, how do you all decorate your offices? Because mm. obviously, we a lot of us, you know, you and I have to store so much, not crap, but like we have to store well, so much in it that it kind of has yeah. to be a really functional space. Whereas all I want to do is just have like a completely empty room with a desk and just artwork on the wall and like a big sofa. Yeah, I mean, I've because I have the studio. My studio is very different to here, which is a, effectively a garden shed. Mm. Um, so this is more of a kind of uh, man cave, in inverted commas. You know, it's got my workbench over there where I've been doing, I don't know if you saw, but I've been doing these, um, I had to go make my own camera strap the other day. You, d- you know, oh, I don't know if you saw, you know I saw because I messaged you and was like, these look wildly cool. Right, so anyone, anyone who's it's, not... It's, Greg won't, not... bl- Greg won't blow his own trumpet about this. Let me blow Greg's trumpet. Um, so, no, pl- please, please don't. <laughs> they are really lovely handmade leather straps that you've been making, and they looked beautiful because you well, had your, I... you had your little logo embossed on it. I don't mean that in well, a that's... patronizing. Oh, you had your little logo. You you had a logo that was little on it. Guess where that came from? I I basically ordered that online. What the, and, the uh, embossing stamp? The, yeah. Got shipped from Ukraine. I was like, I felt guilty. I was like, I'm pretty sure you guys have got bigger things to be dealing with than no, they, sending they, me they, my logo. Obviously, there's there's stuff going on, but the country's functioning, so that, that's great. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So, oh, that's cool. I, I actually I, send me. Send I did me actually that. put. I did actually put a little thing. You know, where you have to write you write a message along with your order. And I put Slava Ukraini, oh, and um, cool. they responded <laughs> with a kind of. I had to like Google Translate what the response was, but it basically was like. The uh, the the response to that to that term, um, but yeah, it, it's um, it's still work in progress. I'm I'm playing around with it. I've, there's a there's another photographer actually who reached out. Um, shout out to Charlie, um, who was like, oh, uh, you know, I've 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 been really into started getting into kind of making some leather bits and bobs, and um, he sent me his kind of like separate profile for his leather work, and it was just. It just made me go, okay, I'm going to get back in my box. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of photographers, especially or just, you know, people in our industry, especially during lockdown, who kind of took up other interests, mm. you know, and, and needed a creative outlet. And for some people that was woodworking and some people that was leatherworking, some people that was baking and, and making for, bread. And, and for two people, r- rather sadly for everyone listening, it was starting a, <laughs> starting a podcast, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that's so, cool. Yeah. I mean, I so I, I'm not going to lie. I'm more a paracord kind of guy. Mm. But when I saw yours, I was just like, "Damn, actually, that's a really it's, nice." Really the reason nice I made thing. it, the reason I made it was because I was fed up with not being able to, you know, buying leather um, camera straps online is they're, they're very expensive for what they are, mm-hmm. and you can actually get those kind of peak design style anchor points online. So it's quite easy to kind of make thread your own and then use it, be able to use it across your camera system. So mainly it was because I wanted a strap um, that was, I'm just going to try and show you how long it is because it's a short strap. 
I think the, I think the is, problem talking about let's talk about strap length though because there's ne- I n- I can never get a strap that's long enough because I'm really tall, and then I hear from other people that straps are often too long. And the thing is, they've they've got to make these products to try and be as one one size fits all. It depends what you're shooting, right, and what you're shooting with. So this was designed to go on a smaller camera, and so the strap is tiny because right. actually, if I'm running two of these. I want to have one that's lower down and mm-hmm. one that's higher up with different lenses, you know, because I'll have prime lenses on. So I'd have a 35 and a 50 probably. So I want to be able to shoot and then grab the other one and not have them clattering around, mm-hmm. you know. So I will make probably the exact same uh, leather strap, but with, um, but for, you know, longer for the other camera. I mean, it is actually very, I mean, the thing is, you've always been quite handy. Eva, I think no. when we when we first met, you talked about carving a spoon, and I was like, "What?" And then you showed me. I was like, "Oh, right, you can actually really do that." That's kind of a, that's kind of amazing. I had, I had a, again, I had a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's 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 amazing. I I wish I was I wish I was kind of like handy at all. I'm just I I'm very good at taking things apart. When I was growing up, um, my nickname was "Ah oh, Crap" because. The, that would be the noise that I would make all the time because I'd be amazing at very delicately taking things apart or not even delicately. I'd be very good at taking things apart. And then I'd be like, Oh crap. I could not figure out how these things would go back together. <laughs> so whenever I was taking something apart, it just guaranteed they'd be like, Oh, where's our crap? <laughs> <laughs> but you did a, a very excellent desk many years ago that was featured all over the place. I remember. I, so, I did. I mean, you- the thing is I, I don't like to ever blow my own trumpet, but I'm quite good at making desks. Although none of them have been as good as the current desk. So I did fine and it looked cool, but then I kept smashing the desk you're talking about. I kept Mm. smashing my knees on the scaffold that I built it on. And then Mm. actually after I'd smashed my knees about 34,000 times, I decided no enough's enough. I'm going to get a big, a big desk. So now I have a recording studio desk. Made, yeah. by, made by a company called Platform or Output. It's the Platform Output or the Output Platform. And for the life of me, I can never remember. Anyway, you can't you can't really buy it in the UK anymore. Mine got shipped in from somewhere in Europe before Brexit, and it's it's my favourite thing ever. But not mm. my fa- not my favourite thing ever. It's my favourite desk. Ever. <laughs> can you imagine that? What's your favourite thing? Well, I really like my it's desk. My desk. Yeah, <laughs> terrible. But you know, it's it's going back to the offices and and calibration and how you work, and it's all so personal, isn't it? Because mm. every everybody's different. Everybody's got their own character that they kind of want to work in. Plus, you mm. also you want to feel comfortable working in your space. I, you can't see, but I, I wasn't feeling my office vibe uh, kind of at all. I felt it was just a bit empty and a bit kind of like boring white room full of kit um and then i think i sent you a picture of it to which you laughed and and here's the here's the trouble everyone listening at home has got no idea nobody other than me and you i think know about this and my wife obviously but she thinks i'm being ridiculous with it as well um i have audio treated my ceiling because obviously for you lovely people at home i wanted to give you the very best experience so i've treated the whole office and i've got a honeycomb pattern across i've extended it since you last saw it and it goes it goes across the whole office and actually it kind of looks all right it kind of looks cool so i'm like all right wicked i'm happy with that it now feels a bit more it feels smaller and way more what cozy. color is it i've gone with so i've got a white ceiling but then i've gone with like a light gray tile because i've learned that if you are in a smallish room and you put in dark colors it can make the room feel really small and especially mm. if you put something dark up on the ceiling, it'll make it feel really tiny. So I just kind of went with yeah. light things. But actually, they're only the cheap foam, like um, felt tiles. Not like not like construction felt. Not like you're going to make like a, a sock puppet character or like a finger puppet. But it's um, proper audio co- acoustic stuff. But it's like they're in hexagon tiles. And I've just created a bit mm. of a pattern on it. Um, and you listening at home might go, God, Tom, actually... That's made no difference whatsoever. <laughs> and I'm sure that's the case. But it makes me feel like I'm doing something. And uh, and then it's also made the, the office feel a bit more vibey. So I'm like, all right, cool. 
because it's you know you've got to want to you've got to want to work in it, especially at the minute where work feels quite hard work, right? I was speaking mm. to someone the other day, and they were like, "It's hard being a photographer, isn't it?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's 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 a hard gig." And they were like, "Do you reckon it's got harder?" And I was like, "Yeah, I reckon I reckon now is a pretty hard time to be a photographer, just because." Mm the kind of erosion of rights wages kind of and rates kind of either falling or stagnating kit becoming really expensive and so it, there's there's just like a lot of more things, competition than ever more competition than ever so it's a very saturated market so it, it does feel tough yeah. so actually i'm now taking the the little victories now i'm like right okay yeah well my office looks wicked i'm really pleased and i'm happy to work in here and i reckon now i'm happy with the space i'll work even harder because before I was a bit like, oh, I don't really want to go and work in there. I'm going to go to a coffee shop. And then I'd be working from the coffee, not working from the coffee shop, but I'd be like distracted mm. <laughs> very easily. Yeah. I think it's important. I, d- I don't know if you do this, but every now and again, I just have to have, I'm like, I cannot do anything until I've cleared my desk. Oh, just kind of my retidied God. and. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. No, but I, I once got told, you know, uh, looking around now going, Ooh. yeah, no, I've done the exact same thing. Well, the, the, the trouble is I, I've got a lot of stuff on the desk in general. So as soon as mess gets on it, cause I've got, so here on the, on the desk, we've got the Mac, I've got the, the little audio interface. I've got a graphics tablet. Oh, and you've got a new, new graphics tablet. I went for the Zents labs. I got sold one at the photography Ooh. show. Um, yes. And I'm I getting used same, to. Oh, do you? Do you? Ha- did you buy yeah. these? Did you buy that? The quick keys. Yes. Which actually makes me look like I'm a member of Daft Punk now. <laughs> hey, there we go. How right? So, so I'm only a few days in. How are you liking it? Haven't used it. Cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> Solid review. <laughs> <laughs> I've had it. I've had it for like. I got really excited at the prospect of it, but. You, I and I when I got it I was like this has got Tom's name all over it. He's gonna love <laughs> setting this up and sitting there and programming all the shortcuts. Yeah. And it's you know what I'm like. Uh well I think if it makes you feel better, I got it a week ago and I haven't had a chance to sit down and program all the shortcuts. So I also mm. have not <laughs> tried it. I do like that it comes with two pens though. Yes. And a thin pen and a fat pen. Yeah. And- no, it's nice. It's a nice setup. And the glove. Oh, yeah. Do you remember your glove? I've... We've talked about it on the show before. I've actually, I think I've hidden mine away. Where is it? It's a very odd... Oh, no, I have actually, I have actually hidden it away. So I think it... I didn't want everyone... Is that, I don't, is that the way it's meant to go? Yeah, that's the way it's meant that's to it, go, isn't that's it? That's it, yeah. Where's, my, where's mine? Oh, mine's here, look. Yeah. I mean, it just, just looks like I've lost half my hand. There you go. It, it does <laughs> high five <laughs> it looks a little bit like um i've only kind of i've, I've really cheaped out on a morph suit <laughs> yeah like we're in some real weird band so we in, are the zen labs in in <laughs> in case any in, in case anyone is wondering why you might wear a retouch glove it is when you are when you are on the tablet it's it basically stops the tablet s- s- silky slide silky slide yeah, that's basically it but actually i don't i don't mind i don't mind wearing it you know because obviously it just looks it just looks super cool and not at all weird yeah the last um, thing you want to do though is like leave the house in a hurry to do the nursery pickup and forget you've got your sleep slide no, glove on no i did it I, the first day i got it i, I forgot i picked the kids up i saw i signed for a parcel and and, the, and the, the delivery guy, who I know quite well, obviously, he was just like, "What is, what is that?" And I was like, "Ah, uh, yeah, right. Are you going to believe me if I say it's a retouching glove?" And he goes, "What's retouching?" And then I had to explain what that was. And then he said, "Look, mate, I've got some other deliveries to make." <laughs> and I said, "All right, please back, please back away, <laughs> please back yeah. away." And then he, yeah, he did make the reversing noise as he as he ran right. from my house. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no. So so okay. Well, that's that's good that you've got it, and that me and you are the same experience level. Um, yeah, I was I was waiting for you to get it because I was waiting to see what <laughs> shortcuts you program. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, look, and I've, then I'd be like, is that working well? Okay, cool. I'll, I might try that then. So, well, listen, I I actually think this could be a TB top tip, TBTT. Uh, so, 
this is one of the things. So that's, I, a, that's not going to catch on. No, it isn't at all, is it? But, <laughs> I, but I, I bought this because mainly because my friends at Global Distribution distribute it, and they were like, "Yeah, we'll send you one. See what you think, and if you like it, buy it." And I was like, "All right, yeah, fine." And I like it, so annoyingly, I've got to buy it. But they they sent me the Quick Keys version. Now, if anyone's wondering what on earth Quick Keys are, it's a separate little panel with a little rotary dial on it and you can assign any of these buttons to be anything you turn it around all sorts of weird stuff um but i was kind of thinking what if that could be programmed to jog and scrub through footage in davinci resolve oh and it, yeah and it can mm. and i was like okay cool because that means i don't need this anymore Mm-hmm. because this little thing does the job of it. Yeah. So I can now pop that on. I forgot I was going to put that on eBay. Oh, I tell you what, the other thing it comes with is a quite nice um, cover for the... This has turned into oh. an advert, but it does. It comes with a cover for the tablet, and um, it's actually quite it's slightly padded. It's actually the perfect size for an iPad Pro, it which is, is quite useful. Well, look, so if I show you... So I, I actually, actually... Here's a good tip, actually. So, don't sound so surprised. <laughs> oh, a tip. Um, right. So you know, actually, so obviously, I I do my portfolio on iPads, mm-hmm. and I bought these on Etsy, mm-hmm. and they are literally really really nice. They're Cordura, and they're 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 nice, soft lined, and everything like that. And I think they were about fifteen or twenty quid a case. And they're handmade, and they're by a company called. Cush case, C U S H C A S E, obviously, made in England, um, and they're really nice. And so I've got lo- I've got a few of them for my iPad Pros. But then mm. when the Zenslab stuff came, that is the Zenslab case. It's the exact same size, and it's got a Velcro thing. And again, it's soft lined. And I was yeah. like, actually, that's a pretty nice little thing to have. So, yeah, I mean it's useful if you are if you then want to take the tablet with you on a shoot and stuff. It just mm-hmm. gives you that extra protection for it. But as I said, it's also quite useful for the iPad. Yeah. Anyway, so listen, av- advert over because it's yeah. it's so far I like it, and the mm. Quick Keys seems to be you know nice and programmable. As you knew that I would buy one. <laughs> I love I love that. Oh yeah, Tom will buy that. <laughs> yeah. And then, Absolutely. unfortunately, I proved you right. I was just waiting for the I was just waiting for the hundred gear uh, day gear thing to finish, and I was like, oh god, no, he's not going to be able to buy one for hundred days. So to wait. <laughs> how long have you but, had? Um, your, how long have you had yours? Probably in October last year or something. Oh, I right. think I I might have bought it in Black Friday, so October November time. But um, yeah, no, it's a nice, it's a lovely little puck. I just haven't. It's lit. I'd I'd forgotten. It's literally been sat there, and I'd just forgotten I've got it. Um, until i brought it up partly because i'm not very good with shortcuts uh, you know i tend to just use a keyboard but what i've really wanted to do with this is set it for brush size mm-hmm. so that when i'm when i'm retouching i can quickly change brush sizes and stuff but i'm greg I'm not really greg, greg stop. stop stop i know you stop. can do that stop in stop. many other ways no 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 <laughs> there is a keyboard shortcut not only in photoshop but Capture One uses the same shortcut to do the same thing. Now, this is uh. this is important because I think actually this would be a huge time saver for anyone using a brush okay. in, digitally in Capture One or Photoshop. So, mm. control and option, and then okay. <clears throat> and then with your pen, left to right does brush size, up and down does brush hardness. So actually, you're able to do all of this retouching stuff really quick just by using Control and Option, and just hold them down together. Left to right does brush size. So actually, you don't, that is a bit of a game changer. Game changer. Honestly, when I found that, I was like, oh. And so here's the thing: if you are then, you know, uh, stamping or you know, you're using the the clone stamp uh, tool, you literally are either Control Option and doing the brush size, or just Option. To obviously set mm. set the point that you're yeah, yeah, yeah. you know using that from, um, and that to me when I found that shortcut, boom changed changed not everything, obviously changed my life changed changed my life. Let me tell you, before I found that shortcut, Greg, 
no, uh, it was it was amazing. It, honestly, that that little that little thing has sped up my workflow possibly more than any other change I've ever made. That's dramatic, but um, it has helped. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to give that a go. We will. Um, I'll put that in the show notes as well. Yeah, along with the tablet and everything else we've chatted about. Hang on. Do you know what? I have a horrible feeling. I've actually just told you the wrong shortcut. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to have to test it. Let yeah, me, double check it. Let me just let me just double check this, because the pro- the problem is it. I don't want to get this wrong. No, that's right. So yeah, left left to right does size, up and down Phew. does. Yeah, there we go. But that works. Everyone was on ten to hooks. That works in any tool that uses a brush. So stone clamp, uh, stone clamp. <laughs> What stone clamp? Stone clamp's my favourite Photoshop tool. Have you not heard of it? It's the clone, yes. it's the cl- cl- clone stamp. Oh dear. Um, and then yeah, obviously brushing and stuff like that, and, and when you're doing masks and things. Um, yeah, super interesting. But that'll that'll yeah. yeah. You don't need to use the the little dial or anything like that. There is a there's a much faster keyboard shortcut built in. Well, there we go. There you I'll go. send my Zen Labs back. No, no, no! Don't do that. <laughs> they'll, they'll be furious with me. But the, the, the use use the use this use the dial to zoom in and out of the picture. Yeah, or so, or something something like that. I mean, you can so, so one of the reasons, ironically, one of the reasons I bought it is because you can assign it to anything, which is obviously why you knew that I would end up buying it. And one of the one of the we're in black and white, but you can change the colours of the the ring around there and the little corners that are on the the um the graphics tablet and stuff like that you can change the color of them mm. and brightness yeah 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 it's got it's got no, it's, I've, i shall sit down and do another little after an, an exciting afternoon of youtube tutorials and well it's just no me but... me and you we just jump on and we'll just do another one of these but we just won't release it and we me and you can just talk zents to each other <laughs> oh, i like it uh? i like it now this does oh, sound man. This... we should be doing an advert we should shouldn't we but anyway it's a it's a good little it's a good little tablet there's a couple of things that piss me off about it i'll not lie in the way that a doesn't connect via bluetooth so you have to have a little dongle plugged into your computer which yeah seems a little bit old school i understand why they've done it because there's lag on other connection models and using doing it like this i understand it just acts like a hardwired device Number two, I have it wired into my USB, uh, my Thunderbolt hub all the time. Um, and so when the machine turns off, I would like the tablet to turn off mm. automatically. I then have to manually turn it off. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than that, seems pretty good. I'm quite impressed so far. See, I, I keep mine on a, little, on a little shelf in front of me. So it's kind of like, uh, for me, turning it off. Is just one of those things he says. Looking around for the t- the off switch, it's actually it's it's the, kind of quite t- nat- up at the top. Yeah, it's, it's there. <laughs> um, it's actually quite natural to kind of turn it off before I slide it back into its little home. Yeah, I just little bed for the night. My 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 night, stuff night, is. In lab. <laughs> do you do do you tuck it up into its little case? Yeah, yep. good. Um, no, but for, for me, it just it just lives on the lives on the desktop. But then again, I've got so much stuff here. That go, talking about having a messy desk and stuff, I've got the, mm. the stream deck. I've got loads of chargers that come out onto my desk. So I bought a mm. um, I bought a GAN charger, which now then runs. What's a GAN charger? GAN charger is the next generation of USB charging blocks. You can get them. You know how like a normal small USB charger will do like five amps it's it's mm-hmm. not it's not like very powerful but these these uh gan chargers have i think the one i've got is a 200 watt gan charger with five ports and then it's, it's gan stand for i'm really glad you asked that i think <laughs> it is gallium nitride nitride nitrate i actually now want to find that out <laughs> Sorry to be the perpetual child on the show who has to be like, why? Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? It says generative adver- adversarial network, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> um, gallium nitride. I was right. Oh, hey, look at okay. that. 
why do I know that? Anyway, so I've got a gallium nitride <laughs> charger. <laughs> But, you know, the ones the ones I've got, I think, are by a company called Ugreen, and they were about 100 quid each, and I bought three of them, one for the office and two for location. One, one for my hotel, one for location, and one for the office. And they, you can basically ch- you can plug everything into them, and they charge at the, pretty much the full rate that the device can take. Um, and I've got some 240-watt USB-C 4 cables, so my mm. my laptop is now charging at the full 140 watts along with everything else that's charging at the same time to its max capability. So which I always thought might be my nickname Max Cap- Max Max capability. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Your alter super e- super. I was going to say your super ego, your superhero <laughs> alter super ego. Super ego, dude. I've already got that. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, if you ever get turned into a kids' cartoon show, you'll be called Max Capability. Max Capability. So <laughs> I'm thinking along the lines of Super Potato, but um, Super 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 if... Potato. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we're really showing our spot, age spot there. the parents in the room <laughs> <laughs> yeah um what so we'll we'll link to that gan charger as well in the show notes so because you know we know that people love to to buy tom's recommendation so mm-hmm. we'll put that in of course can i also give you a recommendation <laughs> get a haircut i know oh I dude <laughs> i got a hair what are you telling me about? I had a haircut. No, no. Oh, for you. To me. Oh, right. No, Greg, your hair looks great. No, my recommendation is I, after the 100 day challenge, I was just like, well, what? I don't really need anything, right? Like, I, mm. I kind of got everything. It's a, gear now is a bit dull. You know, I know we've talked about it, you know, little bits here and there, but I haven't like waxed lyrical. Little bits. Yeah, but I haven't like waxed <laughs> lyrical about it. Like, I, it's there to do a job. Like, my mm. whack on was knackered. So I didn't want to buy another one, so I bought the Zen Slab. I mean, it's, it's not a very thrilling thing, but I realised. Mm-hmm. I I actually think right. <sighs> right. Oh, I, I saw I saw this pop up the other day on your story. So I've well, what you can't see behind me. Can you see? There's a stack of them, just there. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I bought loads of these cases now. When these are made, when these are when Hayden, I'm just I'm I'm gonna have an intervention. We need another hundred days. We need another hundred days. You no, know what? Look, so so this costs to get to get this made up. So for anyone who is not watching the video side of things, this is a custom aluminium flight case, and this one has was made by a company called Sam Cine. Now I don't think they're still, I don't know if they're still going, but these cases are rock solid. And when I was first on film sets, everything that I could see was in these cases. And so there's a historical... Oh, so these are quite old, are they? You've had these for a while. I have not had these made up. And the, this is the this is the reason. So Hayden, stand your intervention down, my friend. <laughs> because a lot of people who are using those cases are like, well, don't really need them anymore. And they're a bit knackered. They're a bit boshed, they're, you know, a bit bashed about. I paid 30 quid for that one. Wow. And then I bought three bigger ones for 90 quid, including VAT. Not each. That's for all three of them. That's so pretty damn good. I get a drill and I drill out the rivets to remove the internal dividers. And I'm going to pay a couple hundred quid to get them refoamed. And then I'm going to use those cases for the rest of my career. Mm. And I think you should look at, you should look at getting, um, I think it's called shadow foam, which is basically when you cut it out, it's like a different color. The layer below. Yes. That's cool. And it's really useful for kind of like uh, knowing what goes where. It's very easy to see if something's missing and whatever. Yeah. So, I, well, what I've decided with these cases is, I mean, I used to, I've always had like, I always referred to it as a rub box. Um, okay. Well, actually, Sounds weird. No, well, it, it, this, this, shows, <laughs> this shows a lot of my kind of mental uh, kind of process. When I used to call it a rub box, uh, I used to call it a really useful box box right <laughs> okay so i hadn't really ever thought that through um uh, then i should have really called it a rue box a really useful box but the yeah. on set i always love having a couple of boxes that you can just that don't have dividers that are just empty boxes that you can just fill with power extensions chargers gaff tape you know clips bongo ties you know whatever 
they can just go into those really useful boxes and then just get full of like all the useful stuff, clamps, all sorts mm. of weird stuff. Um, and I, I now I've got a few of those because I just thought, actually, I don't want to buy a Pelly or something that might, you know, get cost me a couple hundred quid. And I'm just, well, actually, well, why don't I get some of these cases? And then I found on eBay, this is this is now where I've done myself out of a, a thing because now I'm I'm still watching a few on eBay and this is where people come in, <laughs> having listened to the show and buy everything up. Suddenly the price of these things all gets inflated. Oh, I'll have, you'll have bought them a long time ago by the time <laughs> this goes out. Don't when, worry. When are we putting this out? We're going to put this out in <laughs> three months' time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the um, I, my my thing now, having done the hundred day gear challenge and stuff, is what what is it I need, and is there a cheaper mm. way of doing it? Without without sacrificing quality, and then when I found those things on eBay, those I actually went over to the company that was selling them, and they showed me that they had about a hundred flight cases they were getting rid of, and they let me just go in and take them all apart, have a look through them, and I was like, yeah, I'll have those three identical ones, perfect. And so for me now, just trying to be sensible with stuff you know as well as work like not quite being as busy as as normally normally we are i think we all might just need to be a little bit more sensible like finance wise mm. so hello it's me it's the boring finance person again <laughs> but you know it's all about it's all about being responsible and a big part of that is you know just looking after buying empty boxes and buying empty <laughs> boxes no but but those those cases <laughs> normally cost about they're normally about 450 quid each to get made by you know cp or whoever these companies are um they beautiful cases that are rock mm. solid um and they make a very good seat as well and also i think if if these do get trashed or dented or something like that well it only cost me like 30 quid so i don't care about it yeah no, so, that's a good it's a bloody good deal it is a bloody good deal i was quite pleased with that but that's but that's now <laughs> this is now tom 3.0 <laughs> So I've had multiple invent- interventions in the past, but I'm trying now to be sensible about everything, which is slightly more boring, but it, it does kind of work out. <laughs> sort of. Well, listen, um, I unfortunately have to dash. I've just realised the time. Yeah, I do too. Uh, um, we are, we've we got uh, we've got some fantastic episodes actually in the pipeline, haven't we? We do. We'll be, um, we are recording... Well, we've got some that we've recorded and some that are about to be recorded. So uh, our next guest is going to be a good one and hopefully one to stoke the creativity. And that's all I'm going to say at the moment. We had a, we had a lovely chat, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so. Um, that should be a good one. Um, but as ever, if people want to find us, please, um, we're still trying to grow the numbers on, on YouTube. Obviously, all these are all streamed on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Not streamed, they're available on YouTube. Oh, we're going live again. Uh, <laughs> Um, and the old, yeah, any uh, likes on... Tom, you do this bit. Oh, crap. Hi, guys. Tom here <laughs> from the Exposed Negative Podcast. What we're trying to do is trying to, trying to grow our Instagram and YouTube channel. Now, listen, I know you think, God, those guys don't have to go on and on about this guff that is YouTube, but we're desperately trying to get to a 1,000 followers so we can monetize it without having to bring sponsors in to help us with the show. Bluntly, I'll just tell you how it is. We want to keep the show in its current format. We don't really want to have uh, loads of sponsors and you know people kind of getting involved with it. So if you are kind of going, oh, I quite like this podcast, or yeah, the podcast is all right, or mm, they really like it. Uh, Tom, Tom talks a lot. But if you want that to all stay the same or slightly differently, uh, please go over to YouTube. I know we go on about it a lot, but it's so it turns out is really hard to grow uh, to a thousand subscribers on YouTube to be able to start monetizing the show. Um, Because the way, the the reason we want to do it is because it basically doesn't change anything for you guys. That literally just ticks along in the background and we don't have to do anything differently as far as the show uh, content goes. And we don't have to kind of then deal with sponsors and stuff like that. So that that's basically why we keep going on about it. So if you kind of go, oh yeah, all right, that's fair enough. Well, that would be really appreciated if you could go over to youtube.com forward slash at exposed negative and just give us a subscribe. Uh, that, yeah. would, that would be really helpful. And, and then if you could like sneak onto your other half's phone and maybe subscribe them and subscribe your mum and your dad and any pets you have. 
that that Literally. would be i mean all the pets these days do have instagram and youtube accounts so yeah please please do please do i do want to hear i mean i think about 30 percent of our audience are cats oh i thought it was 26 and then the rest of the four percent was dogs oh anyway well maybe i might be getting wrong yeah. <laughs> but yeah so that if you wonder why we keep going on and on about it that is the honest the honest reason we'll always try and be honest with you guys and we quite like doing the show how we do it and we'd rather just try and keep it this way um and yeah try and basically do that without however if zen labs are listening and they want <laughs> that's right i mean here's the here's the thing guys if you if you do want to send us some stuff or maybe even send us a tablet to give away we could uh we could definitely talk about it again <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that might be why they don't send us stuff <laughs> Uh, it. but yeah so yeah so so uh please help us keep the show how it is and uh go and give our uh youtube a uh, subscribe if you want to find us personally we are on instagram both of us uh greg's is at greg fennell g-r-e-g-f-u-n-n-e-l-l and i am tom barnes.com as in t-o-m-b-a-r-n-e-s-d-o-t-c-o-m and yeah i think that's probably it for today's show I think it is. Perfect. Nice chatting, man. Always, my friend. We'll see you very soon.